and welcome to Blackstone.com. I'm your host, Ro Carter. Today, I have the pleasure of talking to Thomas Hobson on his new movie, Ghosts of the Ozarks. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Ro? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, I live in the East Coast, so the weather about to get a big snowstorm. Oh, so I won't tell you that it's 77 degrees today. Yeah, I don't like, and you got a tan, brother. You look, you look <laughs> good and healthy. I'm not, I'm, I don't like you right now. I don't like you right now. <laughs> but anyway, anyway. Um, so, man, this movie, woo, it, it brings a lot of heat. Um, your character is basically is, is named James, mm -hmm. uh, who is a doctor who is mysteriously uh, summoned to help his uncle out in a remote town in the Ozarks, only to discover that the town is filled with secrets and surrounded by supernatural presence. So what yeah. made you decide to take on a role like this? Um, you know, uh, we did a couple years ago, um, uh, Tara, Perry, Jordan Long, Matt Glass, and myself, we did a short film version of this. Okay. Uh, and we just had such a great time that when we got back to LA, Jordan and Tara started writing a full feature. And I just kept saying, I really want to play this role. And they're like, we're writing it for you. <laughs> um, you know, I said, cause you know, as an actor, you wait a long time for someone to trust you with a role this large and material like this. Uh, and so, yeah, when it came to me, I was like, it's really, it's happening. It's me. I'm the guy. The answer is yes. <laughs> what do you need from me? Um, you know, uh, cause I just, I really just wanted the challenge. Uh, I thought James was just such a complex character and so different than people who, I'm usually offered to play that I I really thought it would be an opportunity for me to stretch myself. Yeah, so that opening scene, you're riding a horse, right? And I, I'm thinking, I was like, oh, this is a period piece. This is post-Civil War, Black man down in Arkansas. I'm like, so how did you really encapsulate that, char that character and also the moment of, did you think about, wow, what was it like to be a free Black man mm. uh, going into Arkansas and trying to find your uncle and, oh, and everything's gonna be okay. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's such an interesting space, that time right after the Civil War, things are still so murky. We're still trying to figure things out. But like, as a, for me, the jumping off point was what must be going on back up North for, for James that this is the best alternative he has, you know? And that was a really good place for me to sort of start. Um, you know, uh, without giving away too much of James's backstory. And also, I'll be honest with you, the place the world was in really helped because we were just coming off of George Floyd. We were in the in the thick of the pandemic. Black Lives Matter was was all over the place. There was so much happening. And here I am filming a movie that has a lot of race relation stuff inside of it in Arkansas, you know. Uh, and so it was really hard not to connect all the dots from 1868 to 2021 or 2020 when we filmed it you know it, it was I was like you know this man is lost he's uncertain the world is changing around him I'm lost I'm uncertain the world is changing around me um I tried to find all the commonalities that we had and then just go from there yeah and there was a lot of similarities comparing to now with COVID and everything going on um that woo. There are some things, you know, in this movie that you and your characters try to live in this utopia and you go in here with an open mind. Oh, wow. This, okay. No one's calling me the N word. No one's calling yeah. me boy. I love that the uh, directors made, uh, did, was that a conscious effort to kind of leave that out to you? So you felt like you were in a utopia? Yes. Yes. We had a lot of conversations. They were really kind to me in letting me be involved in uh, every time they would finish a draft of the script they would send it to me and I would read it and they were like give us notes and you know I know that they always joke that there was a draft where like the race stuff was really in your face yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know like it was like always being mentioned and I was like okay we get it he's black he's a doctor he's in the south we get it um I think that sometimes the beauty is in what we don't say you know, and then we can sort of see it in James's reactions to things, you know, as James, as, as the characters walking around and seeing right when he gets to town, black and white people walking around cohabitating, you know, and so you can see it. You don't have to always necessarily say it, you know, and I think that was a conscious thing that we all wanted was 
for people just to see that it was a normal thing in this world for these people to live this way. But also, I guess, as the movie goes on, ask yourself, what, what does it take for them to live this way? Yeah, so it leads to my next question, fear. Fear plays mm. a huge part in this movie. Um, how powerful is fear, you know, in, in, especially in creating uh, a new utopia or a new civilization? Fear is everything, you know. I think that we're seeing right now in, in, you know, in America and across the world, you know, what you can do if you can make people fear something. If you have a common enemies, a common threat that you can convince people is going to end their way of life, then you can get people to do almost anything. And I think that's, you know, that's what they've accomplished in this, in this world, in this utopia. The utopia only exists because of these elements that people fear and revere and respect and all of these things, but like, what are they? We don't know, we just know enough to be afraid. But also, it, you know, this movie, some, sometimes fear is necessary mm -hmm. to keep the peace. And so now you're kind of fighting with that balance, like, you know, and trying yes. to understand the community in this movie. So uh, hats up to them to really do, doing a fine line, but having an understanding of what was going on. Um, a big thing, uh, your uncle in the movie, uh, Uncle Phil, you call him. Uncle Phil! Uh, he asked you in this movie, it's a, it's a huge point when you guys have a close in shot together and he's like what's your purpose everybody here has a purpose so mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you what's your purpose oh me um you know I think my purpose is uh I am at my happiest and most fulfilled when I am pouring I feel like I'm pouring into other people I feel like my art is part of that that especially in the last couple of years like the world is so dark and to be a person a vessel through which joy is given, distraction is given, entertainment is given. Um, I'm really proud of that. And when I was five years old, I told my parents, this is what I wanted to do with my life. And, and I think it's just, it's my purpose. My purpose is to bring joy and to entertain. And, and, and sometimes in doing that also to educate. I think movies like this, you're entertained, you're having fun, you're scared, but also there's some great conversations that the movie also is having and you can continue outside of the movie. Hey man, thank you so much, Thomas Hobson. Uh, my name is Ro Carter, this is blackfilm.com. Good luck, man. Thank you, Ro. Have a good one. Bye.